Hi everyone, welcome, welcome to part 9 of the Trumpeter U552 U-Boat build. Uh, it's been a bit of a delay since part 8 because of uh, computer issues and can't get any building and filming done so I had to wait until it's all been fixed. But here we are, here it is, this bit, the conning tower. Yeah, uh, it's been a bit of decision making to have to be done, uh, how we're going to do it. What we're going to leave clear, what we're going to leave paint, what we're going to paint. Uh, but now uh, you can go along and see how we got it all built and how we got it all finished. Go and have a look. See you in a moment. All right then. Just before we get into the build of the um, the conning tower, uh, I show, I thought I'd show you what I've been getting up to while I haven't been able to film. Uh, I've been sat round. Uh, I've got on and finished the last compartment in the boat, which is the electrical switch room and the rear torpedo area. Uh, there's only one torpedo tube in the aft end. Um, I've left the door open on the tube this time. Hopefully I'll remember to uh, make another torpedo and I can uh, display it as uh, being loaded into the hatch. Oh, the build it's just the same as you've seen the rest of the uh, compartments going together. Uh, it's quite nice, quite nicely detailed in there. Um, nothing unusual or different from the rest of the compartments. A little bit weathering up with some dust and grime. Um, just the, uh, as you've seen before, the, the pigments and the oil washes and such like that. Uh, oil wash on the walls and some streaks and rust in the in the bilge compartment areas uh, it's just all about ready to go in now uh, this will go into the solid um, sorry the the clear section of the aft end the clear section will slide over this as yet I'm undecided how I'm going to paint it I think I will probably paint it uh, with some openings in uh, not leave it completely clear give it a bit of detail uh, on the outside of the hull but that's what I've been good doing it's uh, going to be joined to the rest of uh, the compartments uh, and on that well I'll go and show you what we're doing okay uh, from the rear engine the rear compartment uh, to the rest of the boat let's go and have a look so what I do first I thought I'd show you the submarine as it is so far um, as I've said, I've completed all the uh, interior sort of uh, compartments. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Um, and I've just taken a time out just to sort of check them in the hull. Do a little bit of a mock up just to see what it looks like. And really see how big it is. Uh, and it's big. And just to see what sort of room I've got left to work with for doing the lighting and running the cables and things like that. So I thought I'd show you as well while it was all mocked up. So uh, I think the only way I could really show this is uh, really to do a bit of a walkabout cam. Now if I cam gets a bit wobbly I'll take it out and show you around the submarine. Uh, hopefully trying to keep it in focus as well. Uh, this is obviously the first compartment that we, we, we ever built. This was the forward torpedo room and cruise quarters. Uh, the bunks in there and moving through. Trying to keep it in focus and trying to not to catch the cable from the, video, the camera. Uh, this is, get back into focus, is the officer's sleeping quarters uh, through there. Remember seeing the toilet? Uh, a little bit of a fun picture of Pete from E-Models, an E-Models poster, because all, all good Germans, they all built their uh, U-Boat uh, models from E-Models, uh, Das E-Models. Um, radio room and sonar compartment, just trying to keep it in focus. Uh, as we zoom in and out, it goes out of focus. How oh, far, far close can we go in? Can we go and see this chap? Uh, there he is. I think he's reading his uh, yeah uh, he's reading his book of chords. Well, I think that's what he's reading anyway. Uh, move through to the um, control room. 
Looks like this guy here is the only guy on board at the moment. Uh, nobody in the control room. Uh, periscope, we, we worked out that this bit here was the uh, attack periscope. Uh, this one, that one, the search periscope. So that's the uh, control room. Put it back into focus. There we go. Moving through, uh, through to uh, crew quarters. Uh, the galley in there. Uh, some the stores, a little wooden box just at the front. And underneath here is the battery compartment. Uh, set, first set of the batteries. And back through to the last uh, section uh, compartment that we uh, videoed. This was the engine room, uh, looking all nice and ready to run in there. And this is the bit that uh, I showed you before. This is the uh, motor room and the aft torpedoes. And if we come right out, a bit wobbly, just to try to just try to focus it so you can see it all. Uh, you can really see now how big it is. This is the full length of my workbench from over here. This submarine takes up the complete bench. And there's even a bit missing on the end because I haven't put this uh, aft section on which is a clear uh, outer hull. Uh, which would take it right up to these boxes here. I may have to consider reconfiguring, reconfiguring my workbench in the short term just so I could get these on. Right, that's about it. Uh, we'll go and get on with the next part of the build, uh, which will be the bridge fin. So we'll get the parts together. I'll clear this off the bench so I've got a bit of room and we'll get on with it. Okay. See you in a moment. I've got to get this back on there now, otherwise, yeah. Uh, right, wobbly camera, oh, never mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't need to see this. Uh, bye. Uh, right then, so let's get on with this build. Um, this is the section of uh, the boat that's called the uh, conning tower uh, or the bridge fin. Um, I believe the Americans on their submarines they call it the sail. Uh, so wherever you are in the world or whatever part of the Navy you're from or in, uh, call it what you want. I'll probably refer to it as the Conning Tower as I go on. Maybe I might occasionally get referred to as the Bridge Fin, um, which is our way of saying things. Uh, but obviously the first thing first, uh, have a look through the instructions, find out what parts you're going to need. Um, I always like to get my parts separate out of the box. Uh, and that way there's no sort of rummaging around trying to find that missing sprue for the, the one part that you're always going to need. Um, and I usually get them all out and put to one side. Uh, here's the first one. Uh, two, um, three, four. Uh, there's a clear section as well. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, as we know from right from the start, from when we looked in the box, that Trumpeter do pack their sprues uh, quite nicely. Some bubble wrap and some polystyrene sheeting inside. Leave them in the bags where and when you can. Uh, that way if any parts fall off, uh, as I say, you'll, you'll always find them in the bottom of the bag. Unfortunately, I don't always practice what I preach. These parts have been used. Uh, bits have been taken off them already. Um, and in fact some of these have been sprayed as well I had the airbrush out I took the trouble to spray a few parts uh, just while they were ready uh, also as well as I've mentioned before some of the parts are quite fragile on the sprue so if the sprue gets bent in the wrong way you're going to end up breaking some of the, the fragile parts such as the railings in here um, also on this part of the build it's the first time we come across any of the uh, clear parts um, uh, there's a clear part sprue just for this and quite strangely I don't understand why but they've cast the periscopes in a clear perspex um, and on that note th this is a perspex um, this is the first part that we're going to use which is the opposite side of the conning tower to this bit 
obviously the mirror of that uh, whereas this is the usual soft styrene um, uh, plastic this is more of a, a perspex uh, I think if I put something behind it you can probably see it a little bit better this is the uh, this is a perspex now what I did notice when I was cutting them off the sprue uh, this bit here uh, that when I use the um, sprue cutters a new pair I got for Christmas uh, that um, it actually started to fracture along the sides of the cut you could just see down here just in there uh, pointy stick time just in there I did manage to see it in time of the uh, uh, cut starting to fracture along the line of, of the cut and it was working its way up into the bridge fin, uh, into the sheet, into the, uh, the side of it. Fortunately I managed to stop and I thought a better way to cut this out would be to use um, a razor saw. Uh, I've got this, this is uh, a 4 to x razor saw I picked up from E-Models. Uh, I think I have another one in here somewhere, I can't find it now. I should have thought forward and brought it out first. This I think is a better way to cut uh, this piece of plastic, this uh, perspex. If you ever come round, if you ever, whenever you come round to cutting this bit of perspex from the sprues or later on when we get to the side of the uh, complete uh, casing, um, we can cut from there. Uh, so what I would suggest to do uh, you can either cut straight from the sprue using your uh, hob, uh, fine tooth saw, cut from there, or you could cut a little bit further along, further back, a long way up the, the tree, and cut it up there, such as that. That way you're not going to fracture the part you're doing. So, just uh, in a case of this, what I would suggest is get a bit of cloth, put it on your bench, and then when you're working, you're not going to slide it all over and scratch it haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this um, whether I'm going to paint it leave it clear cut a little section out well this I usually make it up as I go along so that's what I'm going to do here so we've got these bits here to cut off so I'll get on with cutting them off and we'll see you later for the next bit uh, as I get everything prepared See you in a moment. Okay. Okay then, right. Where are we up to? Uh, first of all, I've gone and uh, painted the interior of the uh, conning tower. The interior of the conning tower. Um, I've also given it a coat of black primer. Give everything on the outside a coat of black primer. I think that's the way I'm going to go. Um because when it's put into here it sort of sits about there I think uh, bring in the uh, conning tower deck that's this bit that will sit there that will go into there now I'm thinking of putting this clear part over the top of it whether or not I leave everything clear I've undecided at the moment I'll know by the end of the video what I'm going to do. Uh, we'll be back to what you saw at the start of the video when I said this is what we're going to do. Uh, that has a clear part to go on there, like that. That will slide on there. Uh, I've got to put that on with um, some clear fix just to make sure uh, it doesn't fog or anything. Um, it's just like gluing on a canopy really when I do that uh, everything else has been primed uh, one periscope I think that's the search one that's the attack one I think which way around they go I'm not quite sure we'll sort that out uh, black primer ready to go on uh, this part as well uh, generally I'll try and prime up as much as I can uh, the deck uh, the deck in the instructions tell us that uh, it needs to be uh, grey. It tells us that it wants to be uh, Mr. Hobby 308 grey. Now I think it want, they're asking you to or they're saying to paint it grey because it would give 
a black deck, uh, a weathered look. So, um, as you probably know, that the deck itself would be a wooden deck, uh, and this part, the top, probably a metal deck as well. Uh, then it would be overpainted with a black non slip surface, which obviously, being a black paint on a submarine, would, would weather over time and it would sort of go grey so I'm thinking that's why they've uh, suggested uh, trumpeters have suggested that we paint it grey I'm not going to go that way I think what I'll do I think I might actually stick to this primer because it's a, it, it looks it looks a blooming good colour really I think I'll do the decks throughout the boat on that and then I'll weather it um, speaking of painting and weathering uh, it's going to be time to paint the outside of this soon and I can't wait to get on with that and what I'm going to use for that I'm going to use some paints from the uh, Life Colour uh, U-Boat uh, German Navy World War II for U-Boat and surface vessels there's a selection of colours in here uh, for various eras of the submarine different types of submarine uh, which they all colour and this one is actually the deck colour I think prior to painting the decks black it would have been painted with this, uh, which is UA612 German Kriegsmarine Tierfrieden, yeah, deck colour painted. Yeah, I think I'll probably just to highlight uh, uh, some of that in the areas around maybe the gun and the conning tower. Uh, sorry, not the conning tower, around the gun and on the deck. Uh, I might sort of uh, do some chipping with this just like patches that it's worn through but that's to be decided and then what I, uh, I've also got uh, from AK Interactive uh, is ships weathering uh, this is for uh, streaking ground for the grey ships which yeah will do because the top of the submarine is in a grey so that should be all right in there uh, there's the rest of the colours in here for uh, the anti-fouling, the blue anti-fouling, which I think is going to be 607. That one. German Kriegsmarine Schiffs Bodenfarbe Grau. Yeah, you know what it is. Yeah, Ships anti-fouling. That'll do. Right, one point I must mention before we move on and get on to the next section is the conning tower. If you're going to light this boat, uh, we've been speaking about lighting and things as we've been going on. If you're going to light it, uh, now is the time to get the lighting in this. Uh, I'll get one of Jennifer's uh, little LED SMDs. Uh, need to drill a hole. There is a, actually a, a light fitting in here. Uh, but I, I've been taking them out and replacing them with the LEDs now what we need to do with this is check first because there is limited room when it's fit in here just let the white balance come back there is limited room under there to get any lighting in so it's really going to have to go in now so drill a hole take the do away with the uh, the light fitting in there uh, drill a hole and then we can drop the light in just poke it through there and feed it down the back uh, with a touch of super glue. A little bit of hot glue will do this job just as well. Uh, this is the thick super glue, so it takes 30 40 seconds to fit. And then the conning tower deck could go on there like that. Uh, that way we can make sure, if you could see, that way we can make sure that the light fitting is in. If you're not doing this, you don't need to worry. Just that if you are, it needs to go in. It'll be less of a struggle, if I can get my hands out of the way now. It'll be less of a struggle to get that light in there before you put the conning tower together. Right, everything else is primed up. Time to go and get this all together and move on to the next bit. See you in a moment. Right then, 
Uh, we're about at the stage now to start painting the conning tower. I thought I'd come back and show you it all sort of uh, temporarily fixed together. That's what all the um, masking tape is. And what I've decided to do uh, about the internals. Um, this bit here will be masked over eventually, uh, shortly, and become uh, a viewing window through the main part of the clear side of the conning tower. The rest will be painted. Uh, you can see into the conning tower by looking at the top and there's not really a lot to see other than the access here. Uh, all this is just in darkness so it's painted black so it, uh, I thought it would look a bit better uh, painting it that way. Uh, what I've done as well now I've got the lighting installed and hopefully you can see uh, it a little bit better in there. It's really a bit difficult to film this and this is only the conning tower. How I'm going to film the whole submarine when it's all together I have absolutely no idea. Uh, periscopes as we know as I've worked out this is the search periscope and this one here is the attack periscope. They're not uh, glued in yet, They're just held in by tape. Um, th this periscope itself has been uh, fit uh, and painted with um, True Metal, AK True Metal. Remember we used the same thing on the torpedoes uh, right at the start. This is steel and gives a cracking job in there. Um, if I can move this just back a little bit and try and keep it in focus. I'm just trying to show you. The tops are painted in a grey. Now then, in working out how far up or down to paint this grey, if you look at the torpedo, sorry the torpedo, the periscope shaft itself, it actually just starts to turn in at the top. So take your top grey paint down I'll look very carefully and just at the point where it starts to turn in, uh, try and keep it, try and get back in a bit of focus for you. Uh, just at the top in there where it starts to turn in, that's the point where you need to mask off for your paint, for your grey paint. Same on the uh, search periscope, that works that way as well. Um, the aft uh, cannon, the aft gun, um, may have seen in the earlier videos, uh, sorry earlier on in this video even, it had a basket on it. Um, this is a photo etch basket, it's a real pain to make and I did make it and I did prime it ready for painting, then I decided I wasn't going to use it. Um, as somebody pointed out there's no evidence uh, and there's no pictures of U-boats having these catching nets on, uh, on the guns. Uh, and yeah, quite rightly, I had a look round too. I can't find them. Uh, so I've took it off. Uh, Safe painting it. I think it actually looks a little bit better as well without it. Yeah, so that's going to be painted as well. Um, I put it on this little box because when the whole thing's uh, assembled, uh, there are bits stick out of the bottom in there. So rather than it falling over and such, I've just cut a hole in the bottom of the box just so I can sit it in there. The colours, uh, yeah, as I showed you before, uh, I'll be using the uh, life colour, the German, the German Navy life colour set, and also um, about painting it, the decks and things like that. Uh, whether it be wood, whether it be steel, I don't really know. Uh, I have found uh, a suit, uh, a fantastic link about U-boat colours. Uh, I'll put it down here or up here or wherever. I'll put it somewhere on the screen, oops. I'll put it somewhere on the screen. And I'll also uh, try and remember to put it in the description as well. There's a link to uh, painting U-boat colors. Uh, there's a wealth of information in there. It's all about weathering submarines. Uh, it's all about U-boat colors. Uh, it's all about uh, the number and um, types of uh, freeing vents in the hull uh, to paint. There's, there's a submarine going past now. Look, there's a boo, boo. Yeah. Um, 
there's a lot of information in there so it, it might be useful to some of you that want to carry on painting it's mainly um, aimed at the Ravel kit uh, but I'm sure everything can transpose across to this one as well as for the uh, hull itself I'll just get this bit out of the way because I've got no room on my bench so everything will go white for this moment Look at that. just get that out of the way and find the hull I'll get the hull out Right, here's the hull. Uh, you can see now I've gone and cut out all the freeing ports, all the vents, such like that, under here as well. I'm not going to cut them out on the clear parts uh, because I think that will create too much of an issue with the fragile plastic, uh, the perspex. Uh, I'll just cut them out on the soft styrene. It does take an age to do. Uh, so be patient. Uh, I'm not going to cut the ones out on the top. I'll just colour them. Uh, the patient some of these vents are really tiny and as I say on that link that uh, I posted up it will tell you all about the correct positioning and sizes and uh, formations of of these vents that's if you want to take it that far uh, by the time somebody had pointed out to me that that article was actually there because I'd never actually read it all I'd only read the painting I'd uh, mostly gone and cut most of these vents out but I think it's fairly accurate anyway um, what I did do with these I did start cutting them out um, thanks for to prop this up I did start and cut them out by hand with a file and a drill and such like that but you can find on the internet uh, you can find on the internet on uh, the selling sites and things like that dental drills dental burrs and these are a lifesaver they will cut the time in less than half use them with a dremel or, or similar type drill uh, hold them in with a collar but yeah they work really well uh, or another thing uh, if you can't find them on the internet uh, if you are having a visit to the dentist uh, these things are one shot I'll try and keep it focused a bit uh, come in a bit and focus it up these things are, are a one shot use so when you go to the dentist he'll use these type of things on your teeth and then throw them away so you could ask uh, if you could have the ones that he's just used on you uh, clean them up boil them and ready to use for cutting the freeing ports out in the submarine yeah right uh, time to go get some paint on now um, reading through the article it tells me what colors to paint and things like that yeah yeah uh, if you want to just go by the trumpet colors uh, and the color call outs if you don't and you want to be more accurate yeah have a read of that article and see um, what bits of it you like and what you don't but uh, yeah I'm gonna go on uh, these, I think these three ports are the main ballast uh, the main blow valves somebody might correct me but uh, I think that's what they are so they'd be closed if it was on the surface uh, right go get it done uh, go get some paint and such on the uh, superstructure oh that's a point to point out here as well if you are uh, excuse, yep, I'll come back in a minute hang on bear with me uh, I'm here right if you are going to leave this part clear when you put the conning tower together the bridge fin it tells you in the instructions to glue these bits on not quite sure what they are or oh, I think they're just part of the uh, bridge strengthening remember if you're leaving this part clear remember to paint the inside of this one paint it black or something otherwise you'll have a grey uh, interior so don't forget that one that's if you're leaving the whole part clear uh, these round the edges these wooden blocks uh, it does tell you to 
uh, paint them brown in the instructions and paint them a wood colour. Uh, they're actually to stop the crew uh, freezing to the edges of the conning tower. That's what they're for. Uh, just obviously the wood doesn't freeze as easily, uh, but it'll stop, it stops the crew freezing to the metal. Uh, but yeah, uh, in that link, got to, talking about a lot about that link now. Yeah, these are actually painted black, the same as the deck colour down there. Same as the deck. Right. Uh, now, time to take it all apart, mask this off, and go get some paint on it, and it'll look a world of difference when we come back. Yeah. Boo. Boo. Right, just a quick update uh, as we're passing by the spray booth. Um, lots of things on sticks um, as they get sprayed. Uh, I'm just really going over them first in a primer uh, and then I'll be uh, painting them with the appropriate colours. Uh, in the meantime I should probably just point out what I'm going to do with the superstructure um, is I'm going to, uh, well I have post shaded it, um, as you know that's just a simple way of uh, highlighting the um, sort of joins or areas on the boat that would be all riveted together the plates and that would be pulled in uh, if not so much the edge of the plate uh, just the the rivet detail as well so we can uh, use that as that I've got on the clear side is now uh, painted uh, the masking's under here that's all to come off yet see it on the back side I quite maybe just can't quite differentiate the colors at the moment between uh, the primer and the top grey. Uh, I've had a look at that link that I uh, posted up earlier um, and it tells me that uh, Eric Trops uh, U552 it actually refers to the submarine in the in the text uh, it says that the interior of the uh, conning tower uh, was painted a dark grey uh, uh, so I've used the um, well, which one was it now? I can't remember. Camouflage series 6 oh, uh, A610 uh, German Kriegsmarine Dunkelgrau 52. I can't remember the German for 52. I did do German at school, although you wouldn't know it. Uh, but that's what that is. Uh, it's on there. It'll probably come out a little bit better once we get the base colour on here and get it all put together. Right back to the spray booth while this is all drying uh, preparing for the next stage and I'll give it a wash sorry not a wash I'll give it light coats of a uh, UA608 from Life Colour or German Kriegsmarine Schlick Schlick Grau Schlick Schlick Grau Schlick Grau Right, I'll go and have a look at my uh, German pronunciation as well. Bye. Okay, right, here we are, back from the spray booth. Um, we're almost ready to start and put everything together now. Everything's been sprayed and prepared and ready to go together. Um, the only thing I can find about the, the paint guide, the, the call-outs for the ones that Trumpeter have uh, suggested is that the colours themselves in the colour callouts are a little bit misleading because they'll paint some they'll show something in here that's white uh, and then they'll, they'll label it grey so uh, yeah it's a little bit misleading um, what I've done I've sort of mixed and matched the two colours to what looks good rather than maybe historically historically accurate um, I've taken for instance I haven't gone with the the white the same color as the interior here uh, I have gone uh, well I'll show you really uh, I've gone with the black deck actually this is if I can reach over for it without knocking the camera the black decks and I think I'll be doing the same on the main deck of the submarine uh, the black deck is actually primer the ultimate primer 
it looks brilliant it's hard it goes on it lays down smooth it's rock hard um i can't really see a problem with it i think i'll just leave it as it is uh, once it's had a coat of uh, matte varnish at the end to flatten it all down it'll protect it um i've given the uh, control room access um to say the white uh, the the light gray as used in the interior because it makes it pop a little bit uh, and then the rest of it I've done in um, the colours that were suggested on that link. Uh, German uh, Schlickelgrau, is that right? Um, and yeah, it, it sort of give it a nice bit of a contrast. It's a little bit difficult to, to try and show you on the camera the contrast colours. Hopefully you can get that. And it's all coming together nice. I've obviously just masked everything off so I didn't catch anything with overspray as I sprayed it on. The next bit that we've done is the conning tower uh, sides themselves. Now this Schlickel Growl, is that what? Yeah, Schlick, Schlick Growl, it's quite a strange colour. Um, it gives it a green sort of tinge, but then again, do you look at it again? and it's grey, really odd, but it looks, yeah, it looks nice. Uh, just trying to get this, yeah, we, hopefully we're staying in focus. Uh, we've reached the stage now um, where we need to put the decals on. Uh, Eric Top, um, Red Devil signature, uh, his mascot on the Conning Tower, the bridge fin. These are really difficult to do. Hopefully come back, yep. Yeah. These are really difficult to do because they're not on a solid uh, backing film. Uh, they are close cut, so all the arms and the legs and the tail, especially the tail, are all loose cut, close cut. So what I've done with it, I did try to film it, but all you could see is the backs of my hands as I'm trying to get it on and swearing. Uh, what I've done with it, soaked it in some warm water as normal putting the decals on and then put a puddle of water on here slid the decal onto the puddle of water and then straightened everything out uh, it does take a bit of uh, patience uh, and then once i've got everything straight i've got a cotton bud and soaked up the excess water and it's lowered the decal onto the surface and then just a final touch up with a soft paintbrush just to touch it up get it in the right position and we're done needed to put it on first because uh, we need to put it on at this stage because there are some uh, handrails that actually go over the figure get these on here something like that this is one for the other side I think so some handrails to go in there like that so that the the, the decal is actually underneath the rail so these need to go on fairly soon so there's the other side there's the two of them and put them together like that now there is going to be a little bit of a gap uh, well there's going to be need to going to need to be some touching up and filling in this because uh, there's a little bit of a gap here uh, there's a couple of ways we can do that uh, we can fill it uh, which I'll probably do anyway uh, and then try and touch the paint work up uh, or uh, as I've seen uh, somebody else on the internet uh, is doing an excellent job of this submarine as well he's actually uh, filled it in and then disguised it with some rust streaks down there so that should hopefully fill in for that so we'll, we'll, we'll work out a way of doing that. Uh, but the next stage we, we need to do uh, is fit the other handrail on this side. So uh, we get to the stage now. Uh, a stage I always like in uh, building models is the um, peeling off of the masking tape. Uh, now, as you know, what we've done with this, painted the whole side, uh, painted the clear. <coughs> Paint the clear side and now we can come to take off the masking tape and see if it's all worked. 
hopefully it has. We need to take it off because we need to get this handrail across. So, uh, right, the great unveil. Uh, you've seen this, obviously I haven't taken it off, so if there's any paint leaks, yeah, we'll do it all live. What I've used, I've used some masking tape first to go around the edges and then just filled in the big bits and I've used some electrician's tape to do that. Looking good so far. This black strip here is the grey, the same grey that's got on the inside of the conning tower uh, and as you can see here I've used the black uh, primer as well for those um, wooden uh, boards. Uh, the black strip, I understand it's, it's there because it stops the, uh, the boots from the sailors uh, marking the conning tower. But, nah, that's where I go. Right, so using, using my nails. Using my nails rather than using tweezers with a, a risk of scratching the perspex. Just a touch of overspray in there, just where the rivets are, but I think we can live with that. Alright, so bring the conning tower back and we'll strip the masking off that as well. It's like Christmas, isn't it? When you take masking off, unwrapping everything just to make sure that uh, there's no surprises of mist paint and an overspray or paint leaped under the masking tape. As I always do, I usually just use the masking tape just to mask off the intricate parts and then just use a filler, sometimes just use paper or something like that, uh, standard household masking tape to uh, mask off the biggest pieces. Saves, saves the mask, saves your uh, to me a tape and such. And this final one just at the top. There, we're done. So this will then sit in there like that. Let's just move the camera back just a touch for you. And just a bit of jiggery pokery to get it in to fit somewhere like that and there we now have a little viewing window so we could see inside the conning tower obviously it's not lit up yet but, but it's now time I think that we can go and finally put this together for one last time with glue and finish it right it's a bit fiddly so I'll go get this done then we'll come back uh, for the closing bits I would think because we're probably just about finished then uh, if there's anything that comes to light I'll tell you right fiddle with this a bit more and uh, go back in a moment okay then well um, each time I complete a section of this submarine it seems like I have to move the camera further and further back from the bench uh, to enable me to get uh, everything in. Uh, that is the conning tower uh, finished. Um, goes together really easily. The only thing that you've got to watch for is that you need to make sure that you get the deck uh, fitting in uh, correctly with the grooves inside the conning tower otherwise what happens is you, you get to leave a rather ugly seam uh, down the front of the conning tower 
uh, it will leave a seam anyway because that's where the two parts join uh, but the better you can make it uh, when it goes when it goes together uh, the less cleaning you're gonna have to do to clean up uh, nothing else of importance that came up uh, I did forget I did forget to put that bit in so I managed to remember to do it before the glue dried so I just had to prise uh, the top of the conning tower apart slide it in uh, but it went in okay uh, nothing else of note uh, I think I've mentioned that I've already taken the basket off that um, because uh, I can't find any pictures of uh, a gun with a basket on uh, the the rails uh, take your time with the railings uh, they will go in fairly easily uh, but they're very very fragile and uh, need just uh, to take your time and patience with it uh, but otherwise the conning tower on this submarine goes together brilliantly and I think it makes a superb model in its own right uh, if you did away with that I didn't have the internals yeah you could make a nice little di uh, diorama I could just put it on a nice plinth uh, a nice piece of wood I just display it that with the periscopes up uh, but nothing else remarkable it goes together really easily uh, nice color scheme as I say we've done it with the um, the the life colors I know that the call outs call for light gray but yeah I think this color looks actually uh, a little bit more authentic than maybe the grey does and uh, it's my submarine yeah I'll paint it how I want you can tell them yeah it's what, yeah but I think that looks quite right and there's nothing to say that U552 wasn't painted in these colours uh, sometime throughout its career uh, as uh, you'll find from that link that I put up I must remember to do that right uh, the other thing that I'm missing from here is uh, to uh, life belts the orange side uh, orange ones on each side usually the submarines when they go to sea they wouldn't have them there they just use them or put them there for uh, being in port and maneuvering maneuvering around ports and things like that because uh, I would have thought that uh, if they'd have been there once they've dived they'd just float away so that's it there is the conning tower Another part done from U552. Now you see in the see on the light how it changes, how the colour changes. Get that up. It's not quite doing it. But anyway, there we go. Uh, right, that's it. Uh, next time, ne when we come back uh, for the next video, we'll have a look at starting some weathering. We'll do the weathering on the conning tower, uh, and then. Uh, I think we could almost look to get into the stage of putting the compartments inside the pressure hull. Uh, so, uh, sorry, not, not the pressure hull, that is the pressure hull. Uh, we can look to putting the compartments in the outer casing. So, uh, that's the next stage. Until then, uh, it's me, Ted, at eModels, eModels.co.uk. And we'll see you next time. Okay. There we go, making a lot of noise. Bye now. Bye.